Hey everyone, this is Ms. Moffat from Across the Litiverse, and it's time to bid a fond farewell to July. Another perfect excuse to talk about books, am I right? In typical Moffat fashion, I am filming this video halfway through July. Starting on July 19th, I will likely be working four conventions in a row. Three for sure, but I'm still waiting to hear back about the fourth one. Not to brag or anything, but I think I'm getting pretty good at filming ahead. <laughs> that being said, I definitely have two books that I'm going to finish before the end of the month, but let's just roll with it. In July, I read five books, which totaled 1,163 pages. I know I spoke rather disparagingly about summer reads a while back, but it does seem that my reading has shifted somewhat. I'm reading shorter books and mixing in more manga and comics and I think the content's getting a little fluffier, I think. This is why I like keeping reading spreadsheets. It's fascinating to analyze all of this. First off, I read Behind the Scenes at the Museum by Kate Atkinson. This was the July pick for my book club, but unfortunately we had to postpone our meeting to August because folks were having trouble finding this book in libraries and in bookstores. I was really torn with this one. I thought the writing itself was fantastic, and I loved the young Ruby Lennox as the narrator. The story starts off right after Ruby's been conceived, and she includes a lot of cute observations about her brand new life. Like the first time she had tea. The story was spliced between Ruby's first person narrative and a third person narrative that shared stories about Ruby's ancestors. So halfway through a chapter about Ruby, you're expected to flip ahead to a short story about one of Ruby's ancestors, and sometimes these stories were as long or longer than the Ruby chapter itself. I had to use two bookmarks while reading this book just so I could flip back and forth between chapters. I hated it at first, but I got used to it as the novel went on. I just found the reading experience was so disruptive and I kept forgetting what was happening between stories and I kept forgetting who was who. Again, I liked the writing itself, I just wish I wasn't getting interrupted every chapter. Overall, I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. Then I read The Marriage Bureau by Penrose Halson. This one was an odd reading experience. This book would be placed in stores as a biography or a historical book because it tells the real experience of two young ladies who started their own matchmaking business in London in the 1940s. But so many of the conversations and the encounters in this book have been fictionalized or dramatized in some fashion. The dialogue was just so plucky and rom-com-ish and there were just neat little bows tied up everywhere. That being said, the parts I liked most had to do with how Heather and Mary actually matched people. The women developed a complicated system denoting a person's social ranking and tracking any number of attributes a person was looking for in a potential partner. At the time, the concept of even discussing what you wanted in a relationship was a foreign idea and yet so many people didn't know where to go to meet a partner. Once I accepted the book was targeting itself as a romantic comedy of errors, I was able to get into it, but I definitely wanted more of the historical side of things. Overall, I gave this one 3 out of 5 stars. For kids books, I finally read a well-loved copy of The Adventures of Captain Underpants. My nephew just got into the series and I wanted a little context for myself. It was super cute and I love that the two boys create a comic book series that they even sell to their friends. And I also love the little flipbook animations toward the end as well. I think I want to read more kids books. I just love how fun and creative they are and just how often they break the boundaries of the traditional book layout. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars and I think I might need to read some more. For manga, I read Complex Age, Volume 4. I was digging this series for its depiction of the challenges that older anime and manga fans face, but this one went a little off the rails. There's an obsessive character introduced, and she sets out to ruin one of the girl's lives in a bid to get closer to her heroine, Nagisa. Yet this volume starts off with a really important moment between Nagisa as she's trying to coax one of her friends, Hayama, back into cosplaying. Hayama's co-workers accidentally find out about her cosplaying, and she's so embarrassed that she ends up quitting her job and moving back home. And yet her story was overshadowed by this random crazy girl. There's one volume left in the series and I would like to see it through to the end though. And last I read Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun volume 8. It totally makes my month anytime a new volume comes out. Nozaki was trying out unpredictable new storylines, he also tried workshopping a library romance, and we got to see a drunk Hori senpai This was an excellent volume and I might need to reread it sooner than later. So that's a wrap on another month. So what did you check out in July and is your reading getting lighter because of the season? If you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up to support this channel. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe for more videos from across the Litiverse. On that note, signing off. This was okay. This was the okay. This was the okay. this was the July.